Good evening, everybody. I would like to call to order the Planning Commission meeting for Thursday, April 14th, and invite you please to stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Okay, and hi, Jesse. I didn't get to have you yet. All right, that will bring us to item three, our roll call. Chair Nemeth? Here. Vice Chair Avery? Here. Commissioner Fragazanes? Here. Commissioner Henderson? Absent. Commissioner Smith? Present. Thank you. All right. May I please get a motion to excuse Commissioner Henderson from this evening's meeting? So moved. A second motion. I have a motion and a second. If there's no objection, Commissioner Henderson is duly excused from this meeting. And that will bring us to item four, a review of our agenda. Sure. We do have one memorandum on item 8B um, that you all received prior to the meeting. Yes. That was my question, actually. <laughs> Should I ask it now or wait till the item? I'm just curious as to what's happening with it since we removed the Q4 additional paving and all of that. Sure. Is it just an agreement or? Yeah, oh, Drew. I, I just, <laughs> I'd recommend, Madam Chair, we just wait for the particular item Perfect. for any questions on the, uh, okay. on the memo. Thank you. All right. Then item five, may I please get a motion to waive the full reading of all resolutions on our agenda for this meeting? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. If there is no objection, then so ordered. That brings us to item six, which is public comments on our consent calendar or on any items that are not on our agenda. This evening, our consent calendar consists of approving the minutes from our last month's meeting. So if anybody is here to speak on that or on any item that is not on our agenda, please come forward and you'll have three minutes. Okay, seeing no one, that moves us to our consent calendar. May I please get a motion to approve the consent calendar? So moved. So moved. I'll second. I'll second. All right. I have a motion from Commissioner Fragasanes and a second from Commissioner Smith. If there is no objection, I guess we shall take a voice vote on that, actually. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Chair Nemeth? Yes. Vice Chair Avery? Yes. Commissioner Fragasanes? Yes. Commissioner Henderson? Absent. Commissioner Smith? Yes. All right. The minutes of last month's meeting are approved with uh, four yes votes and one absent. That will bring us to our first public hearing, item 8A. And this item will be presented by Jasmine Alvarado. So good evening, Planning Commission. The project before you tonight is General Plan Amendment 21-002 and Zone Change 21-002. And it's submitted on behalf of the applicant, Four Points Enterprises, LLC. has submitted a request to modify the general plan land use designation from medium residential to regional commercial and public facilities and zone from medium residential to commercial center public facilities for three continuous parcels totaling approximately five acres located adjacent to Pear Blossom Highway and approximately 1,700 feet west of Fort Tejone Road, State Route 138. Please note that no development is proposed in conjunction with these requests. On this side, you will see exhibits of the existing general plan land use designation and zone for the properties in question and the surrounding properties. Approval of the request would change the general plan land use designation, as I mentioned, to regional commercial and public facilities represented in the exhibit to the left and the zone to commercial center slash public facilities represented in this exhibit to the right. Additionally, the request resolves a past missed designation because of 
one of the three parcels, it was a public utility site containing a water well, which will, was erroneously designated R2. The zone designation of PF allows for the existing well to remain on site for the continued use by Palmdale Water District. And recommend, the recommendation is to adopt resolution number PC-2022-016, recommending City Council approval of the General Plan Amendment and Zone Change 21-002, and find that the project is exempt from environmental review. And that is the end of my presentation. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Alvarado. Do any of the commissioners have technical questions for staff at this time? All right, then I will open the public hearing on this item. If anybody is here to speak on this item, please come forward and state your name, and you will have three minutes to speak. And if there is nobody here and there is no objection, then I shall close the public hearing on this item, and I shall ask for a motion or a discussion. I make a motion to adopt resolution number PC-2022-016, recommending City Council approval of General Plan Amendment 21-002 and Zone Change 21-002 and find that the project is exempt from environmental review. Second. All right, I have a motion from Commissioner Fargus-Sains and a second from Commissioner Avery. Any discussion on the motion? All right, then can we please have a voice vote on that? Chair Nema? Yes. Vice Chair Avery? Yes. Commissioner Fargus-Sains? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Thank you. Um, all right, let the record reflect that the motion passes with four yes votes and Commissioner Henderson absent. Congratulations, and we will not be offended if you choose to leave the meeting right now. <laughs> you are excused. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> all right, that will bring us to item 8B. Megan mentioned there was a um, memorandum on this item, and it is regarding uh, conditions of approval that have been um, amended for clarification purposes. So before you is site plan 22-003, and density bonus agreement associated with it is 22-001, submitted on behalf of the applicant, JCL Development, LLC. The applicant is requesting to uh, construct an affordable multifamily residential development on approximately four and a half acre vacant parcel located on the southwest corner of 25th Street East and East Avenue Q4. The development consists of eight two-story multifamily buildings with a total of 70 units, including one manager's unit. The project proposes to reserve 100% of the units with the exception of the manager's unit for low-income households. The project will also include site improvements such as landscaping, parking, lighting, sidewalks, etc. and meets and exceeds all of the PMC requirements with four concessions. Four cost-saving concessions or incentives that are intended to encourage the development of affordable housing are allowed under state density bonus law. Along with the development of the 70 units, the project includes two amenities and various open spaces for residents to enjoy. There will also be a child's play area with outdoor play equipment and a community room. You can see the different areas there. The proposed architecture is a Spanish style with, which is prevalent in Palmdale and includes design elements, colors, finishes, that provide variation and in visual interest in the building elevations. The building material consists of smooth cement, fiber cement trim and fascia, and wood lattice and tile roof. A color palette compatible with the desert environment includes beige smooth cement, red roof tiles, wooden lattice, and brown accent trims and fascia all on all four sides of each building. A density bonus is an, an, an increase in the overall number of housing units that a developer may build on a site in exchange for including affordable housing. State density bonus law offers incentives that in, are intended to encourage the development of affordable housing, including 
an 80% increase in density. The project site has a general plan land use designation of multifamily residential and is in with, within the R3 zone. The minimum density for this site is 44 units and the maximum would be 71 units. However, the density bonus law requires that when a, a project includes 100% of the units for low income households, the city must grant an 80% density bonus increase over the base density which would allow an additional 57 units for this development. Although the, the maximum density for this project is 120 units, the residential development does not require an increased density and the applicant proposes to develop 70. The owner has requested cost saving concessions or incentives in accordance with the government code section 65915 and PMC section 17.25.110 as follows. Um, to allow a reduction of the required open space from 30% to 15%. To allow a reduction of required private open space from 200 square feet per unit to 150 square feet per, feet per unit. Increase the maximum travel distance from assigned parking spaces to unit entrances from 150 feet to 250 feet and allowing a reduction of setbacks along both 25th Street East and East Avenue Q4 from 20 feet to 10 feet. And the, rec the recommendation is to adopt resolution number PC-2022-017 as amended and recommending city council approval of the density bonus agreement 22-001, approving site plan review 22-003, and finding that the project is exempt from environmental review. And that concludes my presentation. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Alvarado. Do any planning commissioners have technical questions for staff at this time? I was just wondering as far as what we're doing um, on Q4 and 25th Street East, or, or is it not needed, or is the city taking care of it, the, the right, I'm sorry, the right lanes? Um, some of the conditions were part were included as part of the project were removed. Um, we're still requiring a, um, a part of the conditions as a raised median to be included on 25th Street East, and that would uh, remain. And we do have Ruben from our traffic division here who can respond to that as well. Okay. Come forward, Ruben. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm so sorry, I can't hear him. Um, we're not removing any of the con um, improvements entirely from the project. Okay. We are adjusting them to match the existing conditions out there and be realistic for what we want out there um, and making it more feasible for development to actually happen. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, if there are no more technical questions, then I shall open the public hearing on this item. If anybody is here to speak on this item, please come forward and you will have three minutes to speak. And is our applicant here? Yeah. All right, could you please come forward? Thank you. Even if you didn't want to, you gotta come up here, okay? So. <laughs> Can you all hear me? Thank you guys for, uh, for having me here today. I'm, I'm here on behalf of the applicant. Our parent company is uh, Newport Partners. Uh, we've been doing affordable housing for over 20 years, uh, all up and down the state of California. Uh, we currently have about uh, eight projects under construction, again, in Northern and Southern California. We're very excited about this project here in Palmdale. And um, it's been a, a pleasure working with Megan and Jasmine and, uh, and Louise on this project. They've been a big help throughout the, uh, the entire process so far. And uh, if you guys have any questions about the project, um, we are happy to, uh, to answer them. The architect uh, team is here as well to answer any specific architectural-related or design-related questions. Thank you very Thank much. You. Do any commissioners have questions for the applicant? Okay, I just do want to confirm that you have read and understand all of the conditions, particularly the um, uh, ongoing element of the project with the landscaping and the Partners Against Crime training and ma making sure that it's a safe environment for the people that live there. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else here to speak on this item? 
All right, then if there is no, could you come forward? Because I can't hear you from back there. You need to, sorry. I know it's a bit of a walk, but I won't be able to hear you otherwise. And my commissioner who's online has to be able to hear you as well. I just want to know, is it for renting or buying? These are going to be rental units. Oh, and how do you go about renting them? You would have to speak to the property management company once they're developed. It'll take a while for them to get built, but they will be at 25th Street East Recording and Avenue in Q4. 25th Street East and Avenue Q4. Uh, yeah. So if you keep an eye on over there, then you'll see how the progress is going, and then you would be able to apply for. Yeah, I'm, I'm, 20, I'm 20th Street East. Okay, yeah, so this is close to that. It's 25th East. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right, is there anybody else here to speak on this item? All right, if there is no objection, I shall close the public hearing on this item and ask for a motion or if there's any discussion on the item. And please remember there's an amendment to this. I'll move to adopt PC 2022-017 as amended, recommending City Council approve the of DBA 2020-00 or 22-001A-7830, approving SPR 22-003 and finding that the project is exempt from environmental review. I'll second the motion. All right, I have a motion from Commissioner Avery and a second from Commissioner Smith. Any discussion on the motion? All right, then I please get a roll call vote. Chair Nema? Yes. Vice Chair Avery? Yes. Commissioner Frogasane? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Thank you. All right, let the record reflect that the motion passes with four yes votes and Commissioner Henderson absent. And now you too are free to leave this meeting if you'd like. <laughs> so, <laughs> congratulations. I look forward to seeing some construction out there soon. Like a little trap door. <laughs> little trap door you can just escape <laughs> yeah, you are not free to leave the meeting you must stay <laughs> all right that will bring us the jasmine show is over and now we're on to the justin show i think we are the next two items are just inside all the jays let's go okay Planning Commission. Tonight we have Zoning Ordinance Amendment 21008, Conditional Use Permit 0206, Major Modification Number 2, and Minor Modification 22013 by High Grade Materials Company. It is a request to amend Palmdale Municipal Code Section 17.72100C. F2E and F2F to reduce the 50 foot setback for structures and or excavations along all property lines to 25 feet in the Quarry Reclamation Zone. Also to modify the conditions of approval of the existing service mining operation located at 6500 East Avenue T. High grade proposes to modify the existing conditions of approval to reduce the 50 foot setback for mining and excavations and structures to 25 feet to be consistent with the proposed zoning ordinance amendment and add a condition of approval to allow daylighting of materials along the easterly property line that currently abuts Vulcan Materials Company. Daylighting allows an operator to mine material up until the property line when in agreement with the adjacent property owner. So if you can see this section that kind of juts out that's the property line that abuts Vulcan Materials Company, and basically they'd be allowed to mine all the material up until that property line rather than having a setback. The proposed modifications will not change the permitted use of the site, but will allow the operator to extract more material from the ground due to the reduction in setbacks and daylighting between operators. The modifications to the mining area are considered minor in nature, are within the mineable area as outlined within the existing reclamation plan and therefore are permissible with a minor modification. The 25 foot setback is an adequate buffer for sensitive land uses because PMC section 1772 100F 
specifies requirements for operations in the quarry zone to ensure uses do not create a nuisance to the general safety, health, and welfare of the public. Some of these requirements include operational hours and standard fencing around the perimeter of the site for safety. The 25-foot setback is greater than the standard setback in most other zones, which is typically a maximum of 20 feet. In addition, projects are reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis and may be conditioned to provide larger setbacks for equipment that may become a nuisance to sensitive land uses. In conjunction with the prior entitlements, the surface mining operation was required to provide standard street improvements on both the north and south half of East Avenue T along their project frontage. As of this date, the street improvements have not been constructed. As such, the draft conditions of approval require the applicant to commence construction of these street improvements prior to expansion of the existing mining operations within the new um, revised setback area. And the recommendation is to adopt resolution number PC2022-018, recommending City Council approval of Zoning Ordinance Amendment 21008, approving CUP0206, Major Bond Number 2, and Minor Modification 22013, and finding that the Zoning Warrants Amendment falls under the general rule, that therefore it's not a project pursuant to the California Environmental Quality Act, and CUP 0206, Major Bod Number 2, and Minor Modification 22013 are consistent with the previously adopted Environmental Impact Report for CUP 0206, Major Bond Number 1. That concludes my presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Sauter. Do any of our commissioners have technical questions for staff at this time? Okay, I just want to confirm this zoning ordinance amendment obviously applies to the entire quarry zone. So Correct. if there are other quarry operators that wish to take advantage of this, they would have to come to the planning department and to request that individual. Yes, correct? it would either be a major modification or a minor modification depending on how their original approval has been written. Okay. So yes, only high grade is taking advantage of this right now, but it'll apply to the entire quarry zone. Okay, so if they chose to, they would come before you for a modification of some kind. Correct. Okay, thank you. All right, then at this time I would like to open the public hearing on this item. If anybody is here to speak on this item, please come forward and state your name and you will have three minutes to speak. And I keep forgetting, is there anybody out in virtual Zoom land? Okay. We usually have such a following that it's incredible, so I should have been asking that. But. Okay, and is our applicant here? Yeah, I wasn't going to let you get away with it either, okay? <laughs> Hi, good evening. I'm Lori Clifton with High Grade Materials. Hi there, welcome. Hi. I just want to make sure that you do understand that the, um, uh, particularly it's condition 18, um, in order to begin mining with the proposed expansion area, you have to begin um, construction along, or improvements along Avenue T, and at least. We do. We okay. do, and the street improvement plans, I think, are ready for their third submittal with engineering, so they're well underway. Okay. Good. And do any of our commissioners have questions for our applicant? All right. Well, thank you for being here. Okay. Thank you. All right. If there is nobody else here to speak on this item and there is no objection, I shall close the public hearing and ask for a motion and or discussion. And I know nobody wants to read that entire motion. I will. But I'll, I'll <laughs> go for it. <laughs> I make motion to adopt resolution number PC-2022-018 recommending City Council approval of zoning ordinance amendment 21-008, approving conditional use permit 02-06, major modification number 2, and minor modification 22-013, and finding that California Qual Environmental Quality Act and that the CUP-02-06, MM number 2, and minor modification 22-013 are consistent with the previously adopted environmental impact report for CUP 02-06 MM number one. Seconding is the easy part, guys. Come on. <laughs> well, I thought you that, that was just very long. <laughs> Did you wait that? 
All right. I second the motion. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, we have a motion from Commissioner Fargasanes and a second from Commissioner Smith. Any discussion on the motion? Should we make her repeat it? No, just kidding. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> if there is no discussion on the motion, can we please get a roll call vote? Chair Nemeth? Yes. Vice Chair Avery? Yes. Commissioner Fragasanes? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Thank you. All right. Let the record reflect that the motion passes with four yes votes and Commissioner Henderson absent. You too are free to leave our meeting. <laughs> or you could stay if you like it. I don't know. But thank you very much. And that will bring us to item 8D. All right. Now we have General Plan Amendment 22002, Zone Change 21003, Conditional Use Permit 21009, and Minor Modification 22011 by Kids and Color Daycare. It is a request to modify the General Plan land use designation and zone for two contiguous parcels and establish a commercial daycare located at 1850 East Avenue R. The site was previously utilized as a church and currently contains four buildings that will be utilized as classrooms for the commercial daycare and they intend to accommodate a maximum of 180 children. Minor site improvements are needed to accommodate the daycare, such as construction of a wrought iron fence around the perimeter of the property, vehicle restricting gates across each driveway, and minor reconfiguration and striping of the existing parking area to establish a drop-off and pick-up area. And the site meets or exceeds all Palmdale Municipal Code development standards. Here are the floor plans of each classroom, and you can see they're broken down by different age groups. And the daycare will operate from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m., Monday through Friday, and they offer a variety of activities including songs, snack time, naps, social play time, um, and they include homework time for school-aged children. There are both indoor and outdoor play areas. The indoor play areas will be contained within each classroom and the outdoor play area uh, is on the existing playground within the courtyard that was previously utilized by the church. The site is currently within the SFR3 single family residential general plan land use designation and the R17000 single family residential zone and commercial daycare facilities are not allowed within this zone. Therefore, the applicant has requested to change the land use designation from single family to medium residential and zone from single family to medium residential as well. The R2 zone is intended for a mix of housing types, but additional uses are permitted that are complementary and not detrimental to the residential character of the neighborhood. The daycare facility is consistent with the intent of the R2 zone because it will occupy an existing building that was constructed to fit into the residential character of the surrounding neighborhood. The daycare facility will not be detrimental to the surrounding neighborhood because the existing playground is centered in the middle of the existing buildings and screened from residential uses to the north, east, and south. And again, this area is previously utilized as a playground for the church. Here you can see the existing and the proposed general plan land use designation. And here we have the existing and proposed zone. And the recommendation is to adopt resolution number PC2022-015, recommending City Council approval of General Plan Amendment 22002 and Zone Change 21003, approve CUP 21009 and Minor Modification 22011, and find that the project is exempt from environmental review. That concludes my presentation, and I'm available for questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Sauter. Do any commissioners have technical questions for staff at this time? Okay, then I shall open the public hearing on this item. If anybody is here to speak on this item, please come forward and state your name. And is there anybody online? Okay. And is our applicant here? I'm just going to guess it's you because everybody else left. So <laughs> could you please come forward? Whoever wants to be the speaker. <laughs> Don't be afraid. <laughs> I was ready every time I 
<laughs> well, thank you so much for uh, considering this opportunity for us and uh, happy to answer any questions. Okay. Um, I do know that um, there were quite a few conditions on here, and one of them did involve um, revising the floor plan to make sure that there's 35 square feet per child um, in each classroom. And I just want to make sure that you have read and understand all of the conditions and everything that's going to be required of you to Correct. move forward with this. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And do any commissioners have questions for the applicant? All right. Then you are free to sit down. You can't leave yet, but you can sit down. Thank you. Thank you See how easy that was? You could have done it. <laughs> All right. And if nobody else is here to... Do you want to speak on this item? Come. You need to come forward, sir, please. Is it about this item? Oh, then you need... Okay. The swap, I mean, the swap meet. Okay, that item has passed, and the the public hearing on that has passed. There's no construction going on there. What we approved had nothing to do with construction at all. Good. Thank you. That's okay. Thank <laughs> all you right. Thank, Thank you. you very much for coming. Uh, Thank you. Okay. If nobody else is here to speak on this item, then I shall close the public hearing. If there is no objection. All right. Then. May I get a motion or a discussion on this item? I would like to say, um, I think this is a very good idea. I live in that area, and I know that um, recently the entrance to the parking lot was chained off, which made me hopeful because I thought something was happening with it. And um, although it upset a lot of Palmdale High School parents. I, think. <laughs> I was just okay. going to say that. I was one of those um, parents that But I, I like <laughs> what, I, what I am pleased with is the intelligent modification of the zoning ordinance and, and I mean, of the zone designation because it does make complete and total sense that, that um, this be utilized for uh, public, um, something to benefit our parents and benefit our community. So um, I want to say thank you to all of you who worked on that and, and pulled it forward. So. With that, I think I'm going to make the motion this time. Since you guys have all done the heavy reading, I'm going to take this one. And I am going to make a motion to adopt resolution PC 2022-15, recommending city council approval of general plan amendment 22002 and zone change 21003, approved conditional use permit 21009 and minor modification 22011, and find that the project is exempt from environmental review. Second it. Thank you. So let the record show. We have a motion from Chair Namath and a second from Commissioner Praga Sings. Any discussion on the motion? All right, then we shall call for the vote. Chair Namath? Yes. Vice Chair Avery? Yes. Commissioner Praga Sings? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Thank you. All right, let the record reflect that the motion passes with four yes votes and Commissioner Henderson absent. And congratulations to you. And you too may now leave the building if you'd like. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good luck. All right, then that will bring us to item nine, our staff communications, beginning with Ms. Taggart. Thank you. So I do have a couple things. Um, for the next meeting in May, we do have the CIP. Um, update that will be coming before you for the general plan consistency and a presentation from um, our public art coordinator to give you an update on where we are with our public art. Um, we will also be having a density bonus agreement uh, for your recommendation on that agenda as well. And then I did want to point out uh, we're getting really close to wrapping up our multifamily design standards document. Um, and we are going to be having our last public meeting on the final draft of that document before it comes before everyone um, for a, um, it will be associated with the zoning ordinance amendment. And that uh, meeting is at, on April 27th. And I believe it's at 5.30 p.m. It will be on the city website, all the information and the document to review. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Mr. Fletcher, do you have any communications for us? Um... <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. I actually do. Um, we've been living life on Zoom um, with some uh, some alternative rules over the course of COVID. And on 
Um, April 20th is upcoming city council meeting. Staff is bringing in front of the council a um, resolution to essentially ask them the question if we want to return to the old rules of the Brown Act. Um, it doesn't make telecommuting impossible. It just adds some different procedural uh, issues that staff will have to address if any commissioners wish to continue to Zoom. Um, so look out for that, and, and based on whatever council's decision will be on April 20th, um, should a commissioner wish to Zoom on May 12th, I mean, we'll, we'll reach out if there are any changes. Uh, we'll just need some more information should the council decide to go the other direction and take us back to the original kind of Brown Act way of doing things. Uh, we're just call it call it. I mean, I, I consider it good news in a way because it's it's we're hopefully phasing out of, of COVID and COVID restrictions and all the things that's kind of kept us where we are for the past uh, two years. So, all right. thank you. Thank you very much for that update. I appreciate it. All right, item ten is our planning commission communications. Do any of our commissioners have anything to say? I would like to say happy day after your birthday oh. to Commissioner Fragasane. Thank you. And I would also like to welcome Sylvia Magianis. Um, and say thank you, Lynn, wherever you are. I'm sure you're watching this because, like, that's what everybody does on Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> but Lynn has served us very well, and I am looking forward to working with Sylvia. Um, and just remind me to slow down if I get too fast when you're doing the meeting, okay? <laughs> All right, and Commissioner Ferguson's. Yeah, I'd like to close tonight's meeting in memory of Diane Shorter. She was she passed away yesterday. She's the current Palmdale Women's Club president, and she was a member of 17 years. Thank you very much for that. So we shall close tonight's meeting in memory of Diane. And with that being said, we shall adjourn our meeting to the regularly scheduled meeting of May 12th at 7 p.m. in this chamber. Thank you very much, and good to see you, Commissioner Smith. Good to see you. Take care. Thank you. All righty. Bye-bye.